Hello, welcome to the channel. Here it is, as spoke of in the previous video, 1976 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, 500 cubic inch motor, 400 turbo transmission, or a derivative thereof. It's either there's. I'm not real familiar with the other versions of the 400 transmission. I've had a lot of 400s, but I don't remember if this is the 375 or a 425 transmission, but it's a derivative of the 400. Anyway, there she is in all her glory. All the well, not all, but most of the chrome is good. Bumpers are good, everything's good around the front. Wheel arches, side moldings, glass moldings, mirrors. Vinyl top has seen better days, but I mean, pfft, car's 40 years old. Come on, guys. A little bit of Bondo here. Not real impressed with that. But, again, 40-year-old car. It's going to have flaws. And, uh... I'm not restoring this car. We will make her as nice as I can on a budget, as time allows, but I'm not dumping 20 grand into this car. I want a driver quality car, not a trailer queen. If I want a trailer queen, uh, I would need to make substantially more money than what I'm making. Anyway, all four hubcaps are on it. First thing I did was pull skirts on both sides and knock the dirt out of them, because those always collect dirt. Got a little bit of rot in the front there behind the skirt, but it's not structural. I do need to get on it and do something with it to stop it from progressing, though. The frame is spotless underneath this car. Absolutely beautiful. The fuel tank is beautiful. Uh, that trunk. Here. Let's just go ahead and show you the trunk. Why not? We're here. Um, prepare for vomit cam, because this takes two hands with the little badge there. fingers out of the way so you can see the trunk. That is the glove box door. I'll explain to you why in a moment. Got some antifreeze back here, some oil, you know, old car stuff. But she is solid back here. And just to show my wife earlier, I took a 20 inch bicycle and stuck it in this trunk and didn't bump anything on the way in. That antifreeze bottle is not good enough scale to show you how big this trunk is. I could literally put an air mattress back here and take the kids camping and uh, just leave the trunk open all night and they can sit there and watch the fish jump out of the water. I do need the bumper fillers. It's about $300, $400. Uh, Not bad to put in, but I don't have the hardware for it, so that will be a challenge. We will confront that when we get to it. For those of you who didn't know or want to know about these cars, this is your fuel fill, right here in the center. How ingenious is that? Oh, what side is the is the thing on? What side do, do I need to pull up on the pumps? Blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about it. Pull up, flip your license plate, and put in some fuel. A lot of you safety monkeys will be like, oh, well, in a rear-end crash, the fuel tank's right there, and it's dangerous, it'll explode. Um, no. A lot of cars, a lot of cars were built like this. Second-gen Camaros, a lot of the Novas, a lot of the Cadillacs, Chevrolet Caprice, Chevrolet Impala, a lot of them had this. And I don't recall any widespread reports of them... Uh, bursting into flames upon a crash and it doesn't really matter in your late model cars the fuel tank is located around the rear suspension anyway so basically the same level of risk you know fuel tanks in the back you get rear-ended if it breaches the tank there's a risk of fire that's all there is to it so you safety nazis that want to be like oh you're going to die in the car i might die in this car it ain't going to be from the fuel tank Make another round on this thing. We're up too close. You guys are probably mad about vomit camera again. Here we go. See what this charming interior is like. I'm parked on a hill, so these doors are a little heavy. I'm on the uphill side. All four windows work. 
That's pretty rare in a car this old, but you can buy those motors brand new. So there are a lot of things available new for this car, and a lot of things are not. So beware. If you're looking for one of these, there's a lot of things you cannot get new. And parts cars are almost impossible to find. There's your gauge cluster. Uh, pretty lackluster for a Cadillac. I figured there'd be more gauges available, but maybe that's a sport option or something. I don't know. 100 mile an hour speedometer. 67,658 miles on the clock, but the 8 is offset. So I will take that to mean that it's a hundred and sixty seven thousand miles which is fine by me I have no intentions of selling this car so anybody thinking they're gonna see this video and buy it uh, you have to make me a hell of an offer Let's see if I can get that in camera where's that fuel gauge at oh this is a horrible video what are you doing you know nothing you don't have a clue what you're doing with this thing Somebody's probably screaming at the screen right now. Put the camera down, you idiot. Yeah, there's fuel gauge. It works. Seems to be accurate. Uh, unfortunately, there's only one way to find out if it's not accurate. Now, remember I was talking about the glove box being in the trunk. That's why some dodo thought he needed a sound system. And to make it even worse... He thought he needed a lighting system. We have LEDs here. We have LEDs up here. We have LEDs over there. Ooh, look at that headliner. She's beautiful, Clark. Back seat's not terrible. Of course, all the dye is, you know, rubbed off on these seats, so they look like crap, but we will eventually reupholster these seats. Uh, not looking forward to paying for that. But... There's radio. Look at them beautiful Cadillac knobs. Uh, radio does power up, but there are some connection issues with the antenna that I am sure is caused by that monstrosity. That will all be coming out of this car. There will be nothing of that sort here. I might put good speakers in this car. But I ain't blasting no rap music. Now, to you, those of you who like rap music... I don't have a problem with you liking rap music. It's just not for me. This car will be blasting old school metal. And I'm not talking hair band, pretty boy, poison, whatever, that part of the genre. I am talking about Wasp and Motley Crue and the Scorpions and some Cinderella. Yeah, Cinderella did the glam rock thing for about 30 seconds and then got out of it. So... Yeah, go ahead and let me have it in the comments about that. But I like the old school metal. So that's what will be blaring from this car on the occasion that I see appropriate. In other news, there was at one time a CB radio in here. So that's kind of cool. I've got a couple of CB radios sitting around. Might end up putting one in here. Don't know what for. Nobody... Even the truckers don't even use them anymore. Just nobody communicates. There's this world of social media, and there's no communication anymore. Imagine that. Anyway, my uh, sun visors are decent. They could use reupholstery, but I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to find that fabric. That mirror, I do not believe, is original to the car. Uh, as far as I know, most of the mirrors were color-coded to the interior, and that one is black and looks newer. And the mounting piece, if I can get this thing to focus, it's not going to focus. Yeah, I need to cut my nails. Big deal. Uh, anyway, that looks like an aftermarket deal to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a freaking moron and you guys are wasting your time watching this stuff. I'm just making this video because I think somebody would like to see this car and it's also for my own records. I like to keep track of certain things. So... No further ado, let's hear this P.O.S. Gotta love them 70s buzzers. Didn't even touch the gas. Now, of course, she has warmed up. You know, this car, from what I'm told, is a little cold-natured. She was already warmed up when I looked at it. Yes, in my book, that is a no-no. You want to test drive a car cold. But I had already seen this guy out and about driving this car, so I know this car is roadworthy and it's got current tags on it. So, wasn't too worried about the runnability. Seems to idle decent. Go 
back here to the exhaust. See how she sounds. Slight misfire, but that's okay. Forty-year-old car. Oh yeah. Let's take a look at that. Nice fuel tank. Nice frame rails. How many of these you see around this nice underneath? It looked this rough outside. <laughs> now I would open the hood, but that's a two-man job with that bent hinge. So, may make a little clip to add to this video with the hood open and this thing running so you guys can see that, but need a little assistance before I can record that, so it'll probably be later in the day before I can get that piece recorded. Uh, the hood doesn't support itself very well because it is way heavier on the front than it is on the back. Brilliant engineering there. All the cool little things, the niceties that were done with this car, and then they couldn't put the majority of the hood's weight back there, they put it up there. Whatever. Maybe I'm just bitching about stupid things. Maybe I'm a complete moron. Who knows? Who cares? I know I don't. Windows! I made a little noise that time. Okay. Let's drive. Pull up out of my lower yard here. We're not going far. There's that rubbing I was telling you about. Turn around right here. I'm not going too far with this car because my battery's going dead on this phone. So I want to get all this video in one shot. Backing, backing. Oh, huh. It's as big as a dump truck, but there's no backup beacon. <laughs> Look twice, both ways. Be safe. This car is massive. And with that hood tweaked, you know, on that hinge like that, it is a little harder to see the dimensions making turns with this, so I've got to get that hinge fixed. Ah, she kicks down nice, Clark. <laughs> use a little better brakes but they're pretty good I was gonna nickname this the death dealer Cadillac so I could get that custom plate uh, DTH space DLR no I'm not a car dealer that's there's no inside joke to that but it's kind of a murdered out looking Cadillac other than the chrome so I thought about doing that, but then in my state I found out that that plate's not available, so we'll come up with something else. My tentative plan with this car... Yep, more of them 70s buzzers. My plan with this car, and I apologize again for the vomit cam, but you know, I'm not a professional videographer. My plans are just to make a nice cruiser out of this and keep it forever and ever and ever and maybe pass it on to my kids if they haven't outlawed these cars by then. Uh, one of my favorite holidays is Halloween. So we're going to have some fun at Halloween. One of the haunted houses I go to every year for my wife and I's anniversary, which happens to be in the thir on the 13th of October. Uh, 
they have a 68 Cadillac hearse out there that's got a bunch of custom airbrushed paintwork down the side of it, and it is an awesome car. So I plan to take this to that haunted house each year. That's kind of the end of the cruising season anyway. And uh, park it out in the front of the parking lot there and show it off with their Cadillac. Maybe get a little notoriety. Uh, wouldn't mind being known in this town as the guy with the Cadillac. So, anyway, that's it for now. I'll bring you back when i got more to show you. Alright, we're back. I uh, just stuck my wood in the hood and uh, got that hood open for you. Opens pretty tall when you've got something to support it with. So, there's all the cross braces. This one's missing a bolt. And uh, this does offer a little bit of triangulated structure to these cars. Uh, just this body's so long. You know, the frame can only support so much. Anyway. Fire this up, you guys can see it run with the hood open. See? Don't have to touch the pedal to start it. It's almost like fuel injection, except all it is is a properly adjusted carburetor. Well, Luke Finley might disagree with how well adjusted this uh, carburetor is. If you don't know his channel, uh, go over to Thunderhead289 on YouTube. A uh, guy knows what he's talking about, and he's very thorough. Anyway, there we go. I'm going to take this chance to shout out a couple of other channels. Uh, for a little while, I've been watching uh, Useful Entertainment on YouTube. Cool guy, he don't take no shit. And... Uh, he got some pretty rad cars. He's got some vintage muscle stuff. He's got some third gen Camaros. He's got some older Cutlasses. Uh, he's got a Trans Am. Dude's got some cool stuff. Go check him out if you haven't already. And the guy's way better at video editing, editing than I am. Uh, I think we're both still kind of amateurs. I'm definitely an amateur, but he's got some good stuff. Uh, another channel is Cold War Motors. All one word, lowercase. Cold War Motors. If you guys love these cars and the cars that were built before them and you're not watching his channel, what are you doing with your life? The dude is awesome. It's just a guy that knows his way around body work. He can do some mechanical stuff and he's got a bunch of late 50s, early 60s and he's got some 70s stuff too but he's got a lot of the old cars and he has done some insane stuff he's got a 60 Plymouth Fury on there that is built from like four different cars and I don't mean he had one car and the other three are parts cars I mean he has spliced the bodies of four different cars together to make one and to look at the progress on it now the car is closing in on being finished you would never know. I mean, even if you pulled the car apart, even if you stripped all the interior out of it, you'd never know that was four different cars. The guy is thorough as hell, and he knows what he's doing. He's not a how-to channel. He just makes videos that uh, he finds entertaining. He tries to put together a program that he would not turn off and, and ignore, and it pays off. It's a great show. Go check him out. Cold War Motors. And uh, another channel I particularly like lately is uh, Diesel Creek. Uh, guy's got some heavy equipment. He's building a farm. He does a lot of good stuff. He's good at explaining things. He's got an old church that he's bought, and he plans on turning into a four-unit apartment complex. And he's done a huge amount of basement and foundation repair to that church. So if that's your thing, check it out. The guy's very motivating. He knows... He either knows what he's doing, or he's a very quick study. He's very good to watch. Again, that is Diesel Creek on YouTube. And the final channel I want to shout out is Jonathan W. He's kind of a rock star in certain circles, I guess. Another guy that knows what he's doing. He's been building hot rods from nothing. From, like, almost literally scratch. Scratch built hot rods. He works on tow trucks. He has a wrecker service. 
The guy does a little bit of everything. As a matter of fact, right now he is restoring an old unit crane. It is absolutely insane. Nobody else on YouTube has taken on projects like that. And uh, if you're not watching Jonathan W., again, what are you doing with your life? Now, granted, you shouldn't spend all your time on YouTube. But when you do spend your time on YouTube, you want to find quality content. So, my personal recommendations, and yeah, they're a little biased because of what I'm interested in. But go check out Useful Entertainment. Go check out Cold War Motors. Go check out Diesel Creek. And uh, go check out Jonathan W. I am not disappointed with anything on their channels so far. And I don't think you'll be disappointed either. Anyway, it's enough of a rant on the end of my uh, Cadillac video here. I hope you guys like this car. Uh, if you have more tips and tricks for my videography, feel free to leave that in the comments, because I know I'm absolutely horrendous at this. Uh, no, I'm not buying high-dollar high cameras or any of that crap. We are doing this on my not-so-smartphone. So, uh, unless this YouTube thing really starts to take off, I'm not investing in equipment that I have very limited use for. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, bye.